Okay, I'm going to go over some diseases of concern if you're growing squash. Include a kind of a little list here of some very common ones, as well as some pictures I've taken in the field. To try to give you what these diseases actually look like in farm fields uh, to give you that way to compare if you're seeing something. So first one, let's start with this powdery mildew, a very obvious one if you're growing squash. Uh, these fuzzy white spots that typically occur on the underside of leaves and shadier areas. Uh, the key part when you're trying to control this is to try to increase air circulation and also apply products at regular intervals. Now you want to start at the very onset of this disease, which if you haven't seen it and you're scouting and you're into that first week of August in southern New England, uh, probably want to start your applications then anyway. This uh, picture here I've taken in a field where you can obviously see the powdery mildew. But this is evidence of a grower who's been making spray applications. As you'll see the center portion of this leaf here where uh, spray products, particularly organic ones that work on contact only, uh, will collect, you don't see a lot of spores. On the areas where the leaves curl up, you see a lot more higher evidence of these fungal spores. Uh, so this is evidence of a grower who's been spraying and making regular applications, which is a good thing. Even though you do see powdery, keeping up those regular applications is advised. Now downy mildew is a much more severe one. Uh, it produces these yellow lesions on the surface and the underside will kind of be this gray kind of tan fuzziness. Now what makes this worse than powdery is powdery lives on the surface of the leaves. Downy is an internal disease. So planting resistant varieties and planting early in the season can help you get by potential late season downy mildew threats because that's where it's more common to occur. Cucumbers get all the different strains of downy. Other subsets, which in the squash category, such as watermelons and pumpkins, they are not susceptible necessarily to all of the six strains of downy. Organically, there's not a lot of options. Uh, chemically, you're looking at a systemic, like a phosphate, and if you make an application and it progresses after about three days, uh, you want to make an application with a different chemistry, and if that doesn't work, then you may lose the crop. So keep an eye on watching downy mildew trackers and talking with uh, growers in your area if this is coming in. Plectosporium uh, produces these white diamond-shaped legions on the petioles of the leaf. It can progress to the stems and also the fruit itself. There's really not that much you can do uh, organically for spraying copper products that can help. Uh, for chemical, bravo, a chlorothionyl product would be the best option. And this is nice growing on this uh, fabric here, prevents the weeds, and allows for a clean harvest of the fruit. Fusarium, uh, what to look for here is wilting plants. The vines and leaf stalks will rot, and if the vines are cut ahead of the rot, internal veins, you can look for that orange kind of tan coloration you kind of see developed here. You want to rotate your squash plantings with monocots or grass species to help reduce this problem, uh, and also don't over-irrigate or over-apply nitrogen, as both of those will encourage fusarium to develop. Bacterial wilt is the wilting of the leaves, as the name implies, and this may, the leaves may return to normal in times of low light, such as right around um, sunrise or just before the sun completely sets. You want to prevent cucumber beetle feeding when this occurs, because uh, that is the main vector for this. And the control is harvest what you can and then pull that plant out so that other cucumber beetles don't feed on that infected plant, pick up more of the bacteria, and spread it to your other plantings. Angular leaf, leaf spot, you see here, these uh, images are brown lesions on the leaf that follow the leaf vein, causing that kind of angular look to occur. Now this can be seed borne, but it's also spread by overhead irrigation. And if you catch it early, copper applications can slow its spread and progression. Bacteria spot is the last one we're going to talk about here. You want to look for small but numerous circular lesions on the leaves, and also it can appear on the fruit. Now, it's not all that common, but high heat and moisture can increase its spread, and copper applications would be advised because fungicides will not work, because keep in mind this is a bacterial disease.